It's Wednesday morning, and you know what that means. It's time for another episode of the Alabama Slam Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Hanna. What's going on, guys? It's Patrick Akers. And joining me again, it's me, it's Steven. Hey, guys. Uh, we'll, we're going to get into something a little different this week. Uh, I think as we were wrapping up two weeks ago, the last time we recorded, we started talking about the AEW roster and how um, kind of bloated we thought it maybe was. And, you know, we, we had the idea of coming up with 10 wrestlers that you would cut from AEW roster. So we're going to start that off first. Uh, my list isn't clearly not as uh, long as the other guys because we were I think gonna, me and Steven went down the whole roster. <laughs> yeah, we were going to do 10 each, but um, I didn't quite get to 10 because I was digging into it the other night and then I got distracted and then I forgot to come circle back around to it. I'm going to start mine off because mine is a short list, but there's a pretty... I think there's a fairly common theme. Um, start off, mine's going to go uh, Brian Cage, got to go, Jake Hager, Johnny TV, Miro Satnam Singh, uh, the Hardys, and Jeff Jarrett. Uh, I love the Hardys. Don't get me wrong. Let's give them a final run and a nice going away. But I think they're, they're spent. Um, if Miro refuses to take a pin from anybody, basically – Come on, dude. You, you got to go. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I you know, whatever. Satnam Singh ain't working out uh, as a wrestler. Um, Jake Hager, what's he doing? You know, he could go be an ultimate fighter or whatever. And I think my problem is bringing in people from WWE just to bring them in. Um, and then Jeff Jarrett, did I say Jeff Jarrett? You, I, yeah. You, you did say J E double F E A double E. He's had a little bit of fun, um, but he needs to be more behind the scenes, dude, uh, at this point. I just feel like AEW shines when it focuses on their own people or people they brought in, you know, independents. Um, that, that's my gripe. Those, those are the type of people. I, and there's plenty of other undercard folks that I would cut, but I tried not to get too in the weeds. You know, there's a lot of folks so like we were saying before we started recording, folks that could go to Ro- Ring of Honor and maybe spend some more time there. You know, there's folks maybe that are Ring of Honor that we could bring up, put them on the main roster, but we won't go too much into that. So I've said my piece. Um Patrick, you go first on who you would cut. It looks like you got a fairly extensive I have a lot, list. Yeah. So the first thing would be like, I would hold a meeting and be like, anybody that wants to leave, there's the door. Bye. So that's Miro, Andrade, if that's Malachi, if that's Buddy, as much as I would hate to see those guys go, I don't think you can do business that way. And that's not my personality. You want to walk out the door, walk out the door. Now, having said that, Folks that we love being around there, we would love to see Andrade stay. Uh, yeah, he's, I would love to. He's got no place in WWE, right? No, like that's what I, I think I would have. If Andrade wanted to leave, I'd be like, what do you think is going to happen yeah. when you get to WWE? I, I think it's CMLL is where he ends up. And anything. it could be, yeah. If you want to go back to Mexico, that's cool, man. Yeah. Like, like Andrade, you know, I'd like Godspeed. to say Buddy Murphy, badass. You know, same thing with yeah. um Malachi, I'm having that same meeting, but I'm having a secondary meeting after that. Yeah, but if they want to leave, like, if they want to leave, let's see. so yeah, I'll just run down. Like I said, I cut a bunch of like, so like Aaron Solo. I just went alphabetical. I cut him, but like, I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, Adam Copeland, really? Okay, I would I, say, that I, one I would have held on to, but I I get it. If I can save money, I have other guys. He's taking up screen time. Not that he's not great, sure, but kind of similar to what you said. I don't think I really want to be known as the company that like the WWE guys just come over to whenever they get tired. Like Swerve's a different story because Swerve was a super young guy that was coming over. That's mm-hmm. a different story. So you know. I see. I thought about Copeland, but I'd like to see him and Christian have a little fun before before Copeland retires. Like he's on his last run. We know that. I might would have let Adam sit on the shelf for a little bit. I don't know if having him directly walk over. From WWE is kind of thing, but maybe sure. it's different. I don't, I don't know. Now, now I want to jump in on that one because yeah. if you're cutting him, the only re- I had some people on my list. I was like, I want to cut, but I, I want to didn't cut them because of Adam Copeland and Christian. And you mentioned them, the Hardys. Hardys, they ain't doing what they they are designed to do at this stage. But the only reason you keep them is if you're gonna do a little bit of fun with Edge and Christian, just because of the history that they have there. If you're getting rid of that. Yeah, I got rid of the Hardys too. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I don't want to. I, I, no disrespect. No disrespect. Edge Hardy boys. I've seen that story before. Yeah, I, I think Matt leaves during your first meeting. Honestly, though, probably he probably does. And then you go. Good riddance to him. Uh, like you said, Brian Cage. Uh, 
Christopher Daniels has gotten a lot of screen time recently. I would put him just backstage. I thought about uh, putting him on that one. This hey, might, he had kind of done it himself a couple years ago. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm retiring. Yeah. And then and all of a sudden he's, he's back in it. So that spot could go to somebody else. Uh, another surprising people like this guy. I don't see what you do with him. Dan Housen, I would also let I, him I go. I kept him just because of the – he. that dude moves and merch. He nice. moves merch. So that would be from a bit – you know, this is why I'm not the business guy. I'm thinking about pure like – Wrestling. Yeah. Art wrestling artistically from the storylines. What does he do other than just get beat all the time? But it, that that dude moves merch. Now people love him. So like I said, there'd be a lot of pissed I, off people. I, I kept him just because I want that paycheck at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, that is true. Uh, all of the Dark Order, I would let go. I'm right there um, with you. Hook, I would move down to Ring of Honor. Jay Lethal, I, I, I have a soft spot for Jay Lethal. I can't let him go. He would be in yeah. Ring of Honor, though, and he would just be a stalwart there and help work with the young guys. Uh, Keith Lee, gone. Kota Ibushi, gone. Lance Archer, gone. Hardy's gone. Uh, Matt Bennett, Matt Taven, Connor. gone. Parker Boudreau, gone. See, I, um, I moved I moved the kingdom down to Ring of Honor. And maybe you could do that, too. But they've already had the run in Ring of Honor. And I put Keith Lee down there, too. I think Keith Lee has... Listen, sometimes it's just, whatever reason, potential just doesn't work out for guys. It happens. He's happens not as good sports. as on, on the mic as I'd like him to be. But I mean, shockingly, I put Miro down in, in Ring of Honor as well because I'm not a, I'm not a hundred percent sure on this this I refuse to lose storyline that's coming out because there's just so much propaganda that comes out of both of these two two things. That is true. And I think if you put him down there and just made him your 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 champion there, and if it is he refuses to lose, that's fine. You got a belt, you be the dominant force down there. You just kick ass, take names, and everybody is that measuring stick of getting past you kind of thing gives it kind of kind of a feel. But I, for I, Miro though, what I what my reasoning was for the amount of money he's probably getting paid mm -hmm. like it's like cap space mm -hmm. could you use that yeah. to go get like well and they're apparently hemorrhaging money at this point well and i've said this before you don't know that if in a year and a half seth rollins is not like hey i want to work a lighter schedule and you don't have the money to mm -hmm. throw oh. throw it all at him it's because he's according to this in a year and a half it's in the next four to five months oh wow like, if you could tell me that I could, like, cutting all these people allows me to really make an offer to Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch, like, those are two people that I would go get from WWE. Yeah. And and bring them right in. Well, I mean, she's still at the top of her game, you know? Right. I want, uh, Wardlow would also be going. Yeah. Three that I would get rid of that weren't on your list that I'm kind of surprised weren't. And two of them are to our team. So, I'm going to – it's technically four, but three. Yeah. I'm getting rid of Pac. I mean, I love the dude. I think he's he's a uh, amazing talent. He's he's got a look. He's got some athletic ability, but evidently he's either hurt all the time or doesn't want to work all the time. So he, yeah. he, there ain't no point in him being there, unfortunately. Right. Um, I'm getting rid of Jericho. He's he's on the downward side of of his career. I mean, that that ain't no mystery. He's fifty something years old, fifty three, fifty four. The value that he's bringing is more important to me on the backside than it is on the on the on the television side at this yeah. stage. And then I'm getting rid of the Bucks. Uh, you know, I I don't see the value they bring to the company at the moment. So that's. I mean, I would agree with the Bucks. I think that would be a converse like. If I was in that locker room all the time and knew like what exactly went down between Punk and the Bucks and all this kind of stuff, if they were the ones that were kind of causing drama, then yeah. I think that talent wise, they can go because I can slide in FTR or I can slide in the, the Lucha Brothers, mm -hmm. the acclaimed. Pac, I would keep because Pac, Pac represents what I would, what I'm trying to build with this. Like, Pac could be a guy that could go down to Ring of Honor and be the champion. I just don't know stuff. if he could, though, at this stage. Well, well, I mean, injury concerns, I mean, that is something. And, you know, He's still he's not been on TV in for ever. A lot of these guys yeah. have just not been on TV. Yeah. For and that a was long like the, time. when I was going down that list because we we both went down that that same yeah. roster. I'm looking at them going if they had less than nine matches this year, wh why yeah. why are we keep unless them? they were injured? Yeah. yeah. Then so I mean I overlooked Bandito or and and you know people that I knew were out because yeah. of injury, but I mean yeah Ar Solo, Ar Fox was that um, all of yours. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a but like Nick Wayne. I moved down to Ring of Honor. I'm moving Daniel Garcia, and if he doesn't want to agree, I'm getting rid of him. And then I've cut like five people of that because you get rid of Daniel Garcia, you're getting rid of Daddy Magic, you're getting rid of Angelo Parker, you're getting rid of Soraya, you're getting rid of Ruby Soho. I, I disagree on Garcia. I think they're setting him up for a babyface run. Well, and I think that like that you do. I think you do want to keep some guys who could eat losses 
and Angela Parker and Matt Menard or are charismatic enough on the microphone that you could figure out to do something. But, but again, I, I tell you what, I'd, I wouldn't mind hearing Daddy Magic on commentary more often. I don't necessarily need to see him in the ring, but he's been very entertaining on commentary lately. But again, I'd put him down in Ring of Honor at this stage because he, all you're doing is making him suck up losses here and and the, you ain't making him shine. In the, right. in the, I mean, yeah. I would have a similar thing to what NXT, WWE's doing with NXT, where guys go down for a couple months, get some wins, maybe win a title, come back up. I mean, that would be fluid especially with some of the dudes who were at that lower mid-card, mid-card level, letting them go back and forth and having it be kind of, um, you know, go back and forth. But some of these guys, like I, the Dark Order, yeah. for as great as they are, they just they do not fit. They don't fit what this company does when the, the company's at its best, which is – a, a realistic as you can get portrayal of professional wrestling. But you say that, but some of the most over acts at AEW are these these comedy weird things. We're like, I mean, yes, Orange Cassidy has evolved, but Orange Cassidy and the best friends are, you know, that's some of their bread and butter in AEW. The Dark Order was a bread and butter for the longest time. It's unfortunate that the the stuff that they decided they decided to go in a different direction with that dark order and unfortunately with brody's passing that got derailed right now they haven't figured out what the hell to do with it afterwards and it's kind of left in limbo but just the fans love john silver the fans love you know the these these comedy s guys right dan house i mean i mean those people move the merch there no you're right about that i think that i would just try again when it comes to we only have a certain amount of tv time which a dark order is not getting tv time anyway and i put them i've moved the dark order down to the ring of honor I, my, the secondary meeting i'm having is look ring of honor is where some of y'all are going to end up and if you don't like it there's the door and i'd be okay with that i'd be okay and i'd be moving hook i'd be moving jack perry i'd be moving the kingdom I'd move Brian Danielson down there to be the pe- person to be the trainer of ROH so that you could get a mentality that you, would get the people that you wanted to eventually move to your main roster in the right place. He could, yeah, he could do that at the end of this year or whenever he's his what's going to be what mid to late 2024 is yeah. going to be his last. And then you and Dick Garcia would both be down there as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, again, we don't know. I know I. Said to start it off, the reason I would cut Adam Copeland is because like I didn't want WWE like I did I don't want to just rehash WWE things, but like from a business wise, if you know you don't know if Seth Rollins is going to become disgruntled, you don't know if maybe you could get a year of Roman Reigns like to just pop something like or it, you you know some of these guys like Will Ospreay is going to walk into this company in 2024, he's going to take up a spot or he should. You don't bring Osprey in, pay him whatever large chunk of money they paid him. You don't bring him in to not make him a high profile guy, right? So I see what you're saying from I mean both sides you you made some good points as well, but like that spot's got to go to somebody, right? Well, and, and, and I like as a GM, I just kind of want to save cap cap space. But here but see here's the thing. You you're, you're Osprey has a place to get there at this stage because of the turnover that AEW tends to have in their in their top spot matches. I mean, you got Cole out, you got Omega now out. You know, you you got they just have a rotating cast of people that cannot stay healthy, unfortunately, for one reason or another. And you know, I want them to be all there, and if they were, you'd have way too many. But with the with the the, the cyclical nature of, of of people being in that top spot and being out, I think you're fine having him without having to ditch a whole bunch of people at the top end. Uh, but listen, I've, I did watch a couple, a little bit of NXT for a little bit. I only, and I've said this before, there's only two guys that I see being mega superstars in NXT right now, and that's Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes. And Carmelo's already getting pushed and I'm up. And I'm saving money because I'm getting win when those contracts come up and I'm throw in the briefcase at both of those guys because they're young enough that you could get them to come in. Like, that's what's going to be. This is when the competition between AEW and WWE is going to be interesting when guys that are young like that, and if if Tony Khan, whatever kind of TV deal or whatever, if Daddy Khan keeps giving him more money, who ever knows. If he can start backing the Brinks truck up to some of these young dudes in NXT who were going to be WWE superstars, that's where it's going to get interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I don't know if you he could. 
because a lot of those dudes they're going to have some loyalty. Hayes has some ex- has has he has enough talent, but I think Trick Williams will feel a little bit of loyalty to that beyond just the the big paycheck. And don't get me wrong, I mean money talks a, a lot more than just yep. goodwill at times, but I think there is a that initial faith put into him is going to help them a little bit, but I think if WWE came at Trick Williams with a three million dollar contract, and Tony Khan said, "I'll triple it and oh, work but, half uh, the well, dates." But, but again, you, you, you had that to- trick starts playing in eight. <laughs> like, that's, I, and yeah. I'll go get the rights to that song. How about that? Yeah, because Tony, Tony's made it clear he don't mind paying for. Song he don't mind rights. paying for a lot of so stuff. So that's why I want to click. Like if I would him, if I was advising him, I would say clear out some of this roster, clear, it, stop hemorrhaging some of this money. Let's keep some of it because there are. Big fish out there that you can go get. But here's the thing. We haven't even talked about any from, anybody from Japan yet, if you want to expand it worldwide. I mean, here's the thing about that, though. It's going to be more than just money. If if one of the things that I, I think is a disservice to the fans that AEW tends to do is they get these people in and they push them into the limelight for 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 that intro period. And that honeymoon ends real quick. And then suddenly you ain't got nothing because... The number of people that they have, as we were talking, there's like 240 something people on their on their roster, yeah. And they've got what five hours of TV, yeah. And they keep bringing up jobbers. They keep bringing up enhancement talents. They keep bringing up ROH people to fill in fill in that time where you've got other people that are in that back locker room that ain't seeing the screen time. Yeah, Ethan Page. No, I'm saying like a caveat like, with this would would be that you would have to fix like the people who are on the roster are the only people you're going to book. You're not going to bring in like Brian Keith is a fine independent wrestler, not ready for television, should not be wrestling Orange Cassidy on Collision. Uh, but he, let Cassidy wrestle somebody else. But he had he had he was featured in not just one but two different programs in this in this this weekend. Right, and that's part of the problem too. So, um, you know, that is that's something that goes along with it. But that's also how we got Eddie Kingston and Ricky Starks. Well, know? Eddie would have been Eddie. But that's what I'm saying. Eddie is the type of guy like I would look for the Eddie type of guys that are on the independent yeah. independence right now. Yeah. And I don't know if there's many of them less. A lot of them have been snatched up. So what, um, what's the rest of your list look like? I mean, I'm getting rid of um, Matt Seidel. I got rid of Christopher Daniels too. I, I, I'm why are you giving TV time to people that aren't going to be the future of your your business? Yeah, they had their run. Um, I got rid of J E double F J A double R E double T and all of that that group. I kept Lethal just because I think he's going to he's better served in in ROH as being that mentor kind of thing. But yeah. uh, Davari and Singh gone. Brandon Cutler gone. Um, I got rid of the best friends too, just because, I mean, you're not even having them out there with Orange Cassidy anymore. So what are they doing? Yeah. Um, Parker Boudreaux, dude ain't cutting it. I'm sorry. I, I want him to be something that it, more than he is, but he don't seem to be it. Um, Peter Avalon. Why, why the hell are we still talking about Peter Avalon being on anybody's roster? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of those guys on mine went to. Um, yeah. He was cut at one point. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if this roster is even like up to date because <laughs> yeah. QT Marshall's on it, and Q, there was Q, a huge Q, thing where they QT like, Marshall's oh. still there till the end of the year. Okay, well he can go ahead and he get gave a he early gave Christmas. his one month notice. Yeah, <laughs> Abushi, I got rid of him. I mean, his his problem is also past him. Like I said, I got rid of uh, the Kingdom, uh, Stu Grayson, Peter Vance. I I'm not sure what your hopes is with them, but if you're not even going to put them into a position to succeed outside of the Dark Order. You're wasting your time there. Lance Archer, I was right there with you. I, I wanted Lance Archer to be more than he is, but that is a that is a company in which even if you are an oversized person, they are going to not use you in a way that is going to benefit. You know, they, they're not an oversized person company. Right. That's why I was like, you can only have. I think this company can only have like two monsters, and I would give that to Samoa Joe and Powerhouse Hobbs. And. I mean, Luchasaurus isn't on my list, but Luchasaurus, if you get him outside of Kristen Cage, he, yeah, he ain't making the cut. Because the- I wish we could see how much these guys are getting paid because that would be a big determining. Because yeah. if like Lucha's getting nothing and Powerhouse <laughs> is getting, I don't know, double it, then you might go, okay, well, then maybe we maybe Powerhouse goes. We can keep Luchasaurus. Like, yeah. And I moved, I, I kept Brian Cage, I kept Khan, I kept uh, Leona just because they're that that Ring of Honor triples uh, trios group. But they, 
if you're going to hold those belts, you're going to be on ROH. You ain't going to be wasting my time on 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 this on on the main roster show. Because, yeah, I don't yeah. I don't want to see it. I don't care. So especially yeah. when they're around a guy like Swerve, and they're you know Swerve should have. Oh yeah, mogul mogul outside of Prince Nana, who I think can help Swerve as a as a as a good guy wrestler as well. Oh, Prince Nana. So you can't get rid of Prince Nana. Yet, yet he is the over. only one from that, that group that stays other than Swerve. Yeah. yeah I saw a video on TikTok today of the Grinch doing the Prince Nana dance. And it's, it, yeah. it's all over TikTok. Yeah. It's in Fortnite, I think. And that's, that's the thing is <laughs> he is, he can function on e whichever direction Swerve goes. Whereas everybody else that's in that group yeah. is, is just wait once, once sure, Swerve yeah. starts being And your, you could do what they're, I, what, what I think they're trying to do with Mogul Embassy is kind of the way that like factions work in New Japan, which is just like you're part of like chaos, but you're not necessarily like we're not necessarily a team. So like Mogul Embassy could have like a Ring of Honor offshoot that print the guy Prince Nana comes out with those guys. Mm -hmm. and Mogul Embassy on the main roster has Swerve and his guys. It's, it's more Bobby with. the Brain in the family where he's, yeah, he's like just that. there managing these people. And if if shit hits the fan, we can rally the troops and, and kick some ass. Yeah. But in the meantime, you do your business. We'll do our business over here kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's what needs to happen, unfortunately. Like, again, we going back to that, that Texas death match. Mogul Embassy coming out there to whoop somebody to whoop Page's ass at the beginning should have been all when in a no disqualification match. There ain't no reason why they shouldn't have been out there beating his ass from from the moment Page appeared on the screen. Hell, in the back of the building, they should have whipped his ass from his car all the way to the ring and been like business done. And then you have that match from there as opposed to coming out there and having them do it at the end where it looks stupid as shit when Brian Cage gets punched in the head and falls over dead. After guys, yeah, I mean that that we did have that nitpick about that match. Yeah. So who who all do you have going to Ring of Honor? Uh, Hook, Jack Perry, Miro, The Kingdom, Brian Danielson, Johnny TV, because I, him and Dalton Castle just Mike battling back and forth entertained that shit out of me the other day. Th that was funny, but I don't think I'd keep him on just for that. Oh, it, it gives it gives Dalton a, a good feud with, and it's not like in Ring of Honor is going to have a, you know, a huge run of anything anywhere else. So you might as well get him a veteran that has some, some of that experience to, to kind of. And see, I would bring Dalton Castle up because I would put him in the Danhausen role. Uh, Cause he, Dalton Castle's physical enough that he could, he looks like he could hang and wrestle Dan he's just gold is, with the microphone. Yeah, and Dan Housen's, I mean, no disrespect, he's 150 pounds. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. He, he, he is, he's scrawny. He's two Marco stunts, but that ain't saying much. Right. So, like, Dalton would be a guy that would come up. Um, and then, but yeah, a lot of, like, Nick Wayne would be a stalwart in Ring of Honor until he gets ready to and like come up. Keith Lee and, like I said, the, that Ring of Honor trio's mogul would have gone back down. Like, how cool would it be if, like, Nick Wayne is a part of Mogul Embassy, but he, it's just Prince Nana's his guy? And Swerve has like deemed him to be, you are the dude. Like I, I run shit up here, you run shit down yeah. there. Why, why, why you want to keep Nick Wayne? Because he's eighteen, and I've seen this dude. In, I've seen this dude live in person. I've seen him wrestle matches in Japan. He's the most seasoned eighteen-year-old in wrestling history. Let him put on forty, fifty pounds over the next five, six, seven years. A lot years. of upside. He, it, the upside is absolutely tremendous. Then, then he's <laughs> got to be somewhere else other than in in a main picture thing. Yeah, hey, Ring of Honor, I think is probably that's a very valid point. You know, while it, we would suck to be like brought up to AEW when, as soon as you turn eighteen, um, and then be like, well, we're going to get you on Ring of Honor for a while. I feel like he's been around the business long enough. He know he understands, right? Like, get him on TV a little bit. Let people know who he is. Then put him in Ring of Honor for a couple of years. Let him bulk up, and then bring him back to TV when he's when he's a little more ready. I mean, you know, he's going with the big dogs right now. You know, he came in his first matches have been with some of the heavy hitters. Yeah, he's he's been dropped into this thing with Christian Cage mm -hmm. and Copeland. He, uh, but he ain't swimming right now. He, well, I mean, he's. he's I mean, got shit. Some, all he's doing is getting hit, getting his head beat in with a chair. <laughs> so like, but I mean, uh, you, you've got a bunch of floaters on his arm, floaties on his arm, and he's he's struggling even with those floaties. If you if you let go of Nick Wayne, WWE would snatch him up like that. Yeah, in a in a heartbeat. That that level of upside with somebody that has that much experience is going oh, to be yeah, incredibly incredibly tough to find. It's like Billy Starks in Ring of Honor. 
Yeah. I think she's going to be now, a who, big star. Because I, I could only think of two people to move up from ROH into the AEW. And Billy Starks was one. Athena. I, would do, I would do Billy Starks, Athena, and Dalton Castle would be the three so who, you want, you want, who, you want who were on Ring of Honor that I would move up. See, I don't think Dalton's move everybody else, there. Yeah. Castle could still be one of those mid-card dudes that's going to be entertaining, but he could take the L's. It's not going to be a big deal because he's going to be entertaining his shit backstage when he takes the L. Yeah. Right? So I think that would be a smart move. You know, he could probably sell some merch too. Um, Billy's in the same type of situation that she, Nick Wayne yeah, is, yeah, 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 but yeah. the difference is she's, she's already physically there with yeah. the other women. Like, if Nick Wayne was 210 pounds, it'd be a different story. He's just a string bean because he's 18 years old and, you know, hadn't got some of that special creatine in his system yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, once that happens, he'll be all right. He, he needs some of that, uh, the, uh, What's his uh, He needs to go to the Brian Cade school, but dial it back like uh, a half. Alan, Alan Richardson, Richardson is who was I trying to think where he's talking about how you got to get that, that that testosterone boost just to get that that cut looking good. Yeah, yeah. Get you get you some. Find you a dude. Get find you a doctor. <laughs> They're out there. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 we we pretty much cover most of that. I think for this point, right? So we yeah. can get into some of the. But the I think matches. that's the thing is some of these people you need to let go because to 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 bring back that CM Punk reference from a while. Sometimes you need to get out of a place in order to understand. And so many of those people that came back and became main eventers had to be let go at some point. Your Drew McIntyre's, your your yeah. I mean, so yeah. Go somewhere, learn learn some stuff, prove your worth. I mean, even Cody, like, yep. he got better in the ring because he went to Mexico. He went to Japan. He went to T- – he went to and wrestled all these different people. And, like, he even said in interviews, like, you know, he grew up in WWE, which is just, like, one way to do wrestling, but there are multiple ways to do wrestling. When you can, you know, work with all these different people, it, it, it's going to make you better. So, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, for a lot of these dudes, I mean, there would be an open-door policy, like – if you let Jack Perry go and Jack Perry hits the Indies and becomes a thing, like sure, like yeah, you can come back. Like yeah, if if they cut Jack, do you think they WWE would care one bit? I don't think so. No, he would have to make some noise on the Indies, but like Jack, they, they got enough people. Jack Perry, if you know, starts where he's also still young, starts working out, you know, gets would in the damn GCW and has some kind of crazy little run with them and becomes. A thing like yeah. Would you have taken Jack Perry over, say uh, Pillman? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I would have. Well, we haven't we haven't touched on this yet, really. Um, but looks like Omega's on the shelf for a while. Diverculitis. How, Diverticulitis. How they said for like indefinitely, right? So yeah, which means it had to be pretty bad. Yeah. So, so that means the Golden Jets thing. You know, they were putting them up to. Go against uh, Ricky Starks and not anymore. That, that uh, jet yeah. has returned to the uh, the terminal. Yeah. So, like, what happens next with the tag team championship? There, my fear, Young yeah. Bucks. Oh Jesus! It could be potentially. <sighs> I mean, who who is your top star? Who is the tag team that you are willing to to throw out there to try to elevate Ricky? Which is what this is all about: is elevating Ricky. FTR. FTR's tied up doing their own weird and they've already they, yeah, that's who they dropped the titles yeah. that, that ain't gonna help them anywhere House of Black but House of Black has gotta establish themselves as something yeah. yeah it's gonna be Jericho finding somebody else and you know I don't think the Golden Jets are ever gonna win the titles but I don't know maybe they could've um, so I don't but I don't know who Jericho could go that's, I'm, that's why I'm scared it's going to be the Bucks because it's ready made and they're ready to plug that in. Would but they, I, but I think if they do that, those titles come off a heck of a lot sooner than they they would have with the Golden Jets. Did Did Danny Garcia ever like officially denounce Jericho when everybody else? No, did? he was the only one. So you, could, I mean, I guess you could do that if you wanted to. But that's I mean, why would you want? I mean, that's not going to. That didn't work for a lot of people, right? right? Yeah, that that yeah. that's not elevating Starks, and that's right. what this is designed to do. It has <clears> to be to it has to be named people. Yeah, which they're doing a bad job of because that promo was. <laughs> no, no, hold on, hold on. whole segment That's, was rough. In, in hindsight, we- in hindsight, looking at that that man going out there, probably high as hell on Percocets, trying to, <laughs> to keep his pain in balance. Does that make you tolerate that promo slightly better? Sure, sure, but Jericho's part was bad too. Yeah, yeah. and 
it threw Ricky off so much that Ricky that Ricky didn't know what to do. I think we even text did we didn't we put it in the group text? It was like this is this is an example of like what how not scripting your promos down to the word can go wrong. <laughs> yeah, there's good versions of letting guys go on the fly. There's bad versions. Yeah. This was a bad version of that. You don't you don't get nuggets like I whoop their ass from yeah. Ricky Starks. You know, walking yeah. backwards. Up Ricky, the he but, tried he tried to save it at the end. But see, that's the thing. If you know, if you go back to the promos that Ricky has been involved in, there's the moment somebody goes a little sideways on him. He he yeah. flounders, and that's that's something that somebody that that has the the reputation or has the appearance of coming off as being you know verbal verbally good can't have as if he keeps getting exposed like that by by some of these older vets that that have that that freestyle ability. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I mean the thing with Adam Copeland where he called him. Vanilla midget. V- v- vanilla midget. Like, <laughs> that was not a good look. I'm sorry. Good. A vanilla m- yeah. small guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, maybe you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that promo was bad. So, so there's, what's the, let's touch on the women's division. There's like, just well, a, you, a bullet you got, point. You got another, there. An, another uh, person that's out that I think is an important part. You're about to lose a secondary story, even though it's a shit story. Because CJ Perry's out too now. She's about to get a finger amputated. It looks oh, like. I just see that. Oh, Jesus, yeah. yeah, I saw that. Fighting infection, yeah. So if if that that takes out your Miro Andrade story, so they are losing multiple storylines here just due to injuries, and it's this is what I'm talking about where you they got that cyclical nature that you can have an osprey there ain't going to cause them to lose much. Have we figured out what the hell's going on with Britt Baker? Is she injured or is I she? I think just, she's just off. The, yeah. uh, we ain't got nothing for you. So. It's, it's either that or is she behind the mask? And suddenly uh, that's going to be your swerve where, but to me, that's a crap swerve because who's going to punch her in the face for it? I know we're jumping all over the place. I'm, I couldn't be more over the devil thing at this point. There's nothing about it that is interesting to me. Yeah. Since we've recorded, there's the, the thing going around that a lot of people think it's Jack Perry because of all the involvements with glass, like Paige getting slammed into the car window the other night. The acclaimed went through the glass backstage. MJF getting the glass bottle over his head. On the one hand, it's kind of funny and a little dig at punk. But on the other hand, nobody cares. It can't. It can't be Jack Perry. It also can't. To me, it also can't be MJF because. Roderick Strong is literally like, hey, this dude's the devil, and you're going to make – if that's the case, you're going to make everybody else in on the roster be a damn dumbass because here's this dude has been screaming at the whole time and nobody's believed him. But that instantly bumps up Roderick Strong. I ain't saying it's a good reveal. I ain't saying I'm happy with that, but it gives us it, – it suddenly builds a legitimacy to this weirdo who then has to dump the two jerks beside him and, and have that Adam Cole – situation resolved i guess i mean that would be so far down the list of options of what i would do for but hey this this is where and i I don't have faith enough that could mjf being the devil could be a good story i don't have faith enough in this company that they can walk that tightrope sat it and make it satisfying but again who who would be a satisfying reveal at this point at this point nobody i'm over the story so just make it adam cole and let's see if you can like can we wrap this up at world's end and call it i mean it i don't if there's not a reveal of the devil at world's end then i don't know really what you what you were doing like surely mjf does not walk out of world's end still a champion i would not have that happen i could be wrong I, you know my opinion on MJF's title run. I think it should have ended a, a while ago at this stage because it's it's secondary to a Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship belt at this stage. And also, I don't like like the other company. Like I talk all the time, the other company's doing long title reigns. I don't know if I want to like. Why do you want to also do it? Because yeah. on the other thing, I'm bored of Roman Reigns too. And yeah. like the thing that brought me back into watching WWE again has now bored me out of not watching WWE again. And like. I would not to hot potato this thing around, but like if every two or three months uh, there was a new AW World Champion until you came back around and somebody held it for half a year, it at least keeps it a little more interesting. Where like you, you, the last couple of pay per views, we were like, okay, well, we know they're not taking it off MJF. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Samoa Joe's a good guy who can kind of have it for a little bit of time. I think he is the, if, if, 
now is the time you are going to pull the trigger and get it off of him. Samoa Joe is legitimate enough to to make it when you are presenting yourself as a sports based pro right uh, uh, company. He has the ability to make himself appear to be a badass enough that he's going to fight people and and give it some legitimacy. Again. Yeah, and who and somebody can beat him at three months and it's okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but the devil thing, like, and and it's not so much that like it's not the concept of having somebody steal MJF's mask and be behind the devil. It's the execution of execution, it. Execution yeah. and how little has happened over. When did this shit start? Two, it's, three it's, months that's, ago? That's the thing. Ago. It's not been – in the grand scheme of things, this is not that long of a storyline for this company. Right. But uh, they've just done – Nothing. It's It's been a nothing. lot of, of – there, there, it's, it's been directionless because what makes these kind of things fun is those – those possibilities. You need to have somebody unmasked as a fake one or something. You need the fake sting to come in to kind of make this. Yeah. Or like this was, what was it? Was it last Wednesday, Saturday? That was the first time the devil had been seen in person again in months. Mm -hmm. Like you needed to like roll these things out a little bit. It can't just be the devil pops up on a screen. And listen, maybe all this could have got thrown up in the air because they had other plans. And in, like Stephen was saying, injuries happen and this, they do, this company is for as great as it is, does not know how to pivot. Nah. Can't pivot to save their life. Right. And maybe yeah. that threw a lot of wrench in the plans. I don't know. Yeah. So we got a couple more points real quick to hit on before we switch back or switch over to WWE for the week. Um, well, the next note is what a rush or what a roosh rather, I guess. Yes. Uh, lethal Mark and Garcia. That, that, I, we are We are toward the end of this Continental Classic. And roosh is still a player at this stage. That's great. Lethal Garcia Briscoe. Yeah. Big old fat zeros in all of them. At least between this match coming up, between Lethal and Briscoe, it's for something. There's a, there's a point to that match other than just, you know, whatever. Yeah. If I don't want to be a loser. That's great. But to me, to make a tournament engaging is there needs to be some closeness to to – you can't tell me that everybody in this tournament is amazing and then have three or four guys and it get just shut out nonstop. That tells me eh, some of them might not have been, been as amazing as you, you led me on to believe. And I think you lose some of the value of those matches when you have people that are just being spoilers and they're not even great spoilers. Yeah, like the, the you know, when the seedings came out, you could look at it and be like, oh, Jay Lethal's there to eat pens. Mark Briscoe's there to eat pens. You know, maybe there could have been some more drama if you'd have had other people in there who – or just had something surprising happen. Like, I don't know, you know, somebody pull out an upset. Um, I mean, your billing – Swerve first match was with Lethal, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. Swerve had just come off getting his ass whipped, but in a Texas death match, you tell me that that he couldn't if he was. Yeah, he's obviously enough. You you feel that he's able enough to eat a loss from John Moxley and and this. And mind you, it's a wonky loss, but still, it's a loss. Why couldn't you have had him eat that Jay Lethal loss from him being hurt and then having to scramble back up to where he is and not eat the other loss later on? Yeah, like you could have just if you that you've had if you had that in the cards. Moxley beating Swerve after he Swerve comes off a Texas death match that we've ne like we've never seen before makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. And then Swerve can go back up. We talked about this before I start rolling. I can I guess I just completely missed that there was going to be an actual semifinal between whoever the two top seeds were. Yeah. Or like uh yeah. not between gold and blue, but the two guys in yeah. gold, the two guys in blue. I just And then there's a final that. after that. And then there's a final at the pay-per-view. And don't I, miss how that happened. Because right now it looks like we're, there's potential for us to get a uh, three-way in the gold league between yep. Moxley, Swerve, and White, which on paper sounds like an amazing match. There's a potential in the blue league to have a five-way tie. At that point, what the fuck is the point of a goddamn yeah. tournament if you're doing a five-way match and a three-way match yeah just have a battle royal call it done and move on with my life other than having you know um, two months of filler matches yeah that, now mind you they're great matches i mean they've been some of the better matches that have been on tv this year that's but. true and this is the so again too like 
if this was not the first year of the Continental Classic, if this was like the fifth year, then a bunch of multi-man matches make sense because then you could be like, we've, we've never done this before. Mm -hmm. But being the first year, I think there probably would have been a better route to go down to just be like, it's this dude and it's this dude and this is it. Next year, we can do things with draws and all kinds of stuff. We can get more creative. We don't want to blow our wad right here in the first year. No, they, they, they have, but we need to kind of establish what this thing is. They ran into that whorehouse with a $50 bill and blew it all over the place, man. I'm man. not the, – the triple threat but in the goal league doesn't bother me that much. It the, didn't bother me until I started – when we had that started having that conversation about how we were looking at Eddie and thinking how he was going to have to – have to be in that mix in order to not lose his belt. And the only way that he can be in that mix is he's, he runs the table for the rest of this stuff, yep. which then just puts everybody else into that that grouping that you, you have ties there. So at that point, a three-way over here, a decisive over there makes sense. But if you've got two undecisive things, it's, it's the repetition that is making me angry at the Continental Classic. And I complained about this with with the the matches where it became just a let me slap you in the chest for five minutes go outside the ring do the same shit and then finally the match starts about seven minutes into the match and that's been the the repetition of these matches and while it works for some of them the fact that you are doing it on all of them takes away the novelty of the other ones and they're doing this now mind you they may surprise me some shit may happen you know to make it so it's it's not a a multi-man thing on both sides but that's what we're kind of looking at at this stage. It looks like just at least in the gold league, the blue league, they could, they could do something. But uh, yeah, if you were just gonna have like, like we talked about, Garcia hasn't won anything, Briscoe hasn't won anything. How kind of interesting from a story perspective would it have been if Eddie Kingston was a guy that didn't win any matches? I mean, it takes you right out of the beginning knowing that he's he's made a big ass mistake in putting those belts up. And then you can do you can be like, oh, Eddie was. But but you would have to do it like you couldn't have Garcia and Briscoe in there. You'd have to put some other mid card high L, mid card guys in there so that Eddie feels like the true underdog. Eddie puts these belts in there and Eddie is the one that comes out completely winless. Then you can do a rebuild with him. At least he has some kind of direction to go right now. He's just going to kind of. Either he's going to be in a five-way match or he's not going to be in the finals at all. And after winning some matches, and it's kind of just like, okay, well, there's some story elements that were kind of missed in this thing. But, you know, I am the the work rate guy of this podcast, so at least I have that to fall back on. Like Andrade and Claudio from Saturday night. Was, that was the best match was, on that, that was card. was great. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and Andrade versus Danielson from last week was the best match. I don't like, need much in wrestle, uh, from a wrestling show to like keep me entertained. Yeah, and, like, the, that the was Andrade matches enough. from the last two weeks have been <laughs> yeah. absolute fucking fire. Yeah. Like the only note I made in our entire document for the last two weeks was Andrade beat the living shit out of Danielson. Yeah. And he did. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Claudio versus Danielson whenever that happens, if that's tomorrow or... Or Saturday at this stage because they've yeah. been mixing up the blue onto Wednesdays now, so I don't even know when it's going to happen. Yeah, Kingston and Garcia's coming up. Yeah, is is Garcia needing that win bad enough to to derail Kingston at this stage? Probably not. It yeah. sounds like the, the next Garcia feud is going to be against Matt Menard. I mean, that's kind of where it sounds like they're going. And then you got what uh, Brody versus who's that leave over there? Brody and Briscoe. They wrestled, yep. No, but it's different Briscoe's leagues. In the other one. Um, is that Gar? Is it who the hell? Uh, who the hell is the other man over there? Claudio, Kingston, Garcia, Danielson, Andrade. Rouge is Rouge in the Rouge is gold. Well, who the hell? Shit, is that? I don't know. Shit, I don't remember either. It'd probably just be a five man, and then all piss us <laughs> off. So lethal. Do we say lethal? Lethal's in gold too. No. Shit, I don't know. I, I can literally, I mean, I, you know, you've watched these matches enough that it should stand out there, but obviously this dude has gotten lost in the shuffle and it makes me sad that I can't even remember the hell <laughs> is, you know, wrestling. I think I would have taken either Swerve, Moxley, or Jay White and moved him over to the other one. I think the gold one, the, there was a problem just in the setting up that the gold one was very top heavy. Yeah. With with guys in a way that the blue league like, but Brody King's kind of been the surprise out of that grouping. But before we pivot to WWE, I see Stephen googling it right now, so it's driving me nuts. I'm sorry. We'll we'll, we'll hit on that real quick, and then we hit him. It's Danielson, Andrade, Brody, Claudio, 
Garcia and Kingston. I don't know. I don't know who yeah. I was missing in that group, but yeah. I know. we got him now. Got him now. Well, let's get into let's get into WWE. We've got a lot of bullet points here to go through. Yes. We got two weeks worth of stuff. Um, <clears throat> The from SmackDown a couple weeks ago, there's a comment about CM Punk it says you can't trust people who <laughs> randomly punch people in the face backstage. That entertained the shit out of that me when he great. said that line. It was, it was, he's talking about Kevin Owens uh, punching uh, Theory and Waller, and just his line of "You can't trust people that can't that go around punching people in the face backstage." He can't do that in 2023. That's just you know. So I have a theory about this. Because I thought that, that was a funny just throwaway comment for the fans, the smart mark fans. But then WWE used it in like a package, which means like the editorial department. Somebody had to make a decision to use that. That was just throwaway. I honestly think with CM Punk, what has he been doing? He's been interacting with everybody backstage. There's so many here. I'm shaking hands, shaking hands, shaking hands. They are going to do the CM Punk is a locker room cancer heel turn where he is like some kind of de facto authority figure in, on this storyline, and it's going to be the best thing in WWE. And, and they've been That's building it going. up to a lot of stuff, too, because he, he, they got the rumors going that he's trying to, to become the new Shawn Michaels when when Shawn steps away from NXT. I guarantee you, the same way that I told AEW that I was like on that TikTok that they should do with Jack Perry, there will be a promo come post-WrestleMania at some point, a backstage segment. Somebody's going to – CM Punk's going to be walking. Somebody's going to be saying something. He's going to turn around. And he's going to be like, do we have a problem? They will use that. That will be the thing. And they WWE. would be stupid not to. They're going to do it. And it's kind of dumb because, like I said, AEW had that right there in your back pocket. The whole Seth Rollins, CM Punk thing is just CM Punk and Adam Page 2.0, except they did a better job. <laughs> WWE did a better job than what Adam Page was getting through. Because I remember when, the, when that promo between Page and Punk came out, the first thing we flagged was like, Oh, this is a week before the pay-per-view and the hangman page being like, I'm defending AEW from you is a really good wrinkle that they should have been running with months before and just didn't do it. I, I don't think they had a... They didn't have a plan. They had no clue. But there's a history of wrestling taking stuff that's happened backstage and turning it into money because people like that reality to, to, to not knowing what's the truth. Because, you know, it, it's one thing to have what wrestling is, but if you get that nugget, that, that Matt Hardy versus edge, because you're, you're having sex with my girlfriend moment, right? people latch onto that and will, it, it turned Matt Hardy in from, from, from a nobody into the potential for where it was only, you know, they decided to, to, to get rid of him too after they made their money. Right, yeah. No. But, but AEW does not see, they, they like walk around with golden eggs and we're like, eh, I might find another one here somewhere else and chuck it and then just scramble trying to figure out what the hell went wrong. Yeah, that's the, that's my, if I had one chief complaint about AEW, that is the thing, is that they have, they got just great storylines galore staring them in the mouth and they just do not pull the trigger sometimes. Well, that, that's sort of, well, Jump over to Raw for just a second. There, the the note says it's not selling out; it's buying in. Yep. CM Punk on Raw. It's kind of what you're talking about, like 100. percent I mean, you can he he's everybody's talking about how he that you can tell by his eyes that see he ain't really caring about this. He's just here for the money. Who cares? You know what? He he's wanting to make money and he wants to make money by punching people in the face, legitimately or not. You know, I don't care if you can make that work. More on power to you, man. I, I'll, I'll believe that you want to be here just as much to make that fat check as I want to be at any other job to make my fat check. I mean, we said for months if if you could put us put them in the ring, put him in the ring with the Bucks and and Kenny and make money on oh, it. It would have been raining money. That's all you had to do, yeah. raining money. Because here's the thing. Apparently, young bucks don't like money. Because I bet Punk would have been willing to. I mean, apparently, Punk did. So he was trying to, to reach call out. A meeting, yeah, six months. We'll give you six months. He. Right now, CM Punk is the most entertaining act in WWE. And he's, you, you, you go back to like how, you know, some of the, the wrestlers wrestling each other getting better. Like how the, the Blackpool Combat Club is built around the fact that they have beaten the shit out of each other and made each other better. CM Punk is raising the game in, in that. You're seeing that with Seth Rollins right now, who's, who's starting to step away from that, that pre-packaged Seth Rollins. Let me recite the lines to Seth Rollins. I'm pissed off because you got this motherfucker here. Yeah, yeah. And it works. Like, this is the most entertaining cesspit in a minute. Yeah. And, you know, for as great as it is to see Randy Orton back and healthy and jacked, 
I'd much rather watch 20 more minutes of Seth Rollins and CM Punk than I want to watch a second more of Roman Reigns and Randy Orton going at each other. It's a good thing he's on a three-hour show then. Yeah. Uh, And especially when the CM Punk heel turn happens. like. Because the thing about WWE is that, like, I'm not really in, I don't really want to see any of these matches anyway. They're like, unless it's Gunther, Gunther's kind of the only one that I kind of gravitate towards in ring. So, for the most part, watching WWE is just watching the promos. And there's no doubt about it. There's nobody better with a live microphone in their hand than CM Punk. It's the promos, but I mean, the, the in between matches between the big ones, I'll agree with you. Some of those you don't need, but it, those payoff matches that give us that storytelling. Of the finish, the beginning, finish, ends of those stories through those matches, I, I, I disagree on not watching those things. But there's very few where I feel like the blow off matches are like, oh, that was worth like. I'm trying to think just of this year. I, I, there's I, not really any Roman match outside no, of uh, Sammy. Don't, don't make me go find my list again. No, there's not like the tribal. I still argue with that tribal combat between Jay and Roman. Like I couldn't even tell you what happened in that match. I don't. I mean, I don't know. The Roman match from WrestleMania was like oh, whatever. Like I'm saying, a lot of the good matches in WWE, it kind of just Gunther. You're 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 disappointed right now because of the Roman continuation where he went through Drew, he went through Sammy, he went through through Cody. So I get I get the disgruntledness of that, but I think. Would I have maybe done the Sammy? Yeah. Would I have maybe done the Drew? No, I'm I'm happy with Drew not because I think Drew come, came out better the way it is. And in theory, the Sammy story came out a little bit better that way too. Cody, because of that injury, it derailed that program. I think I think Cody would have probably came out with that if he had had that chance to build his underdog storyline, comeback storyline there. But because he was derailed with that pectoral injury, you could not put him into that match and have him win on that short term and have it feel the way it will feel when he finally does win it. If he does win it. Yeah. I mean, CM I, Punk is now, now a, a, a... I mean, I don't know if they do Punk and Reigns, Punk and Rollins. I mean, I don't know where... I think Punk it, and Rollins is going to It would not surprise me in the least if the belt gets put on Punk quicker than Cody at this point because... Rollins' belt or Reigns' belt? Reigns. Oh. See, I think I think the Rollins' belt goes on Co- uh, on goes on uh, Punk now. I mean, that's the cl- that's the yeah. obvious one, but, it th- but I'm just saying because... The way Punk entered AEW and was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not coming in. I'm going to chase the belt. I'm going to put over these, work with these young guys. I, these, I want, I want to wrestle Darby Allen." And then three weeks into it, he's doing the, the belt gesture, on, on the top rope. And I'm like, "Okay, well, let's put a belt on." It Punk. just here's the thing though about, and I'm sure WWE's thinking about this. Somebody's least brought that up. Like, if you get a WrestleMania, Punk walks out with one belt. Cody Rhodes walks out with the other one. Who's a bigger star? Punk. You built you built Cody Rhodes all this time up, and here comes this dude that, that the audience ain't seen in ten years. And I mean, th- there's there's a storyline potential there. You yeah. could combine the yeah. belts right back. You could do any kind of thing. Yeah, but like, I, I mean, the the, the whole the, the the Punk and and Rollins angle to me right now is probably the most interesting one because you know Seth comes out and is like. You know, you said you were home, and he's like, "All you did was slag this place off for ten years, and you know, and and, and talk shit about everybody and everything here." You know, he's like, "This is See, not your." But home. you're interested in that because you've already had a taste of, you've already had that 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 sample of the Roman Cody one. So it's not that new flavor, fresh that 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 punk That's one true is. Too. But you say that that punk would be the bigger star of that. I don't necessarily think because it would be on two separate nights, number one, and the memories that the, 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 with the endurance that it takes to get through two nights of WrestleMania, while you might remember something, as long as you had that, that moment on that second one, and then they went on to separate directions, I think you'd, I think they would both come out making money galore and be happy with where they were. It's possible, but you're just, play, you're playing because the casual fans that gravitate toward WrestleMania, would be like, oh shit, CM Punk. I remember that guy. Yep. Cody doesn't have that. Not any, well, he did, but it's a year gone now. We're past well, and that it, is yeah. true. We're past. We're past that point too. But Cody was never even in AEW. 
it's not even Cody. There's not a lot of people who have reached the level of stardom that CM Punk has reached in professional wrestling. And that's again, that's because 10 years ago, this the numbers that they are getting today would be low numbers for what they are getting 10 years ago. Sure, as far yeah, as, yeah. But you didn't have that, a thousand streaming services 10 years ago. Yeah. But by that same token, I mean you're seeing the 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 excitement that comes with that nostalgia kind of thing but i think you use that to rub all your other ones cuz it's not like you know cm punk is is fresh i mean he's 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 all up there in age too i mean no for sure yeah but that's that's a you know you know i don't think you're bringing punk back unless you just have big plans of like we want to get something if you're going to make him a heel he has to have the title Oh, one hundred. I think that you get the baby face moments of the of the two. You get the glorious happiness of two good guys winning the belts on two different nights. Does he have it, a match yet? No, no. He's wrestling gonna, at the the MSG show. Uh-huh. Yeah, before Christmas, he's wrestling Dominic. So I'm sure but, you'll see. But stuff again, like that's that. not that's not a televised show, is it? No, no, no. But it'll be like on. You'll see it on TikTok. Sure. No, no, no. His but, first match will be the Royal Rumble. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. And then I think he goes into I think he goes into South. I think he wins the Royal Rumble, by the way, too. Sure. And, and so then we got to find a way to get Cody into that. And that yeah. Let, let's let's skip over to uh, Judgment Day stuff. There's a couple of points here uh, about the priest is about to get bailed, meaning the briefcase was wasted on him. And then also uh, everybody loves our truth. Um, and then in parentheses, he finally did the right thing. So this is, this is, that was all two weeks ago now, but they continued this plot line for another, another week. And I, am I happy with the judgment day becoming comedy? No, I think they need villains that are strong on that show. Are they producing solid comedy? 100% right now, because our truth is a, comic genius and that man is is has the ability to turn chicken shit into chicken salad so much that it, it blows my mind that the, the 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 stuff that he creates you got you can the subtle acting that I, that you're seeing in the ring when when priest is up there making his leadership decisions and you're seeing uh finn balor give some looks over like you know and you dumbass and Rhea's gonna kick your ass here at some point and we're gonna kick your ass i'm i'm waiting it's making me excited about when that trigger gets pulled and and priest gets gets his bailey moment where he's out of that group um we had last night uh, now was last night yeah i guess it was last night the <laughs> truth comes out with his judgment day shirt with the little tape at the bottom saying and truth <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> coming out there going we're going to have a match i didn't even know we we're going to have a match but whoever is in this match me and jd we're going to fight and loser leaves judgment day kind of i mean it's stupid as hell but he's making these stupid ass moments just so much fun that that it's enjoyable it's just kind of crazy cuz this is the same group that took a chair to Edge and his wife. Yep. Not that long ago. Nope. It really wasn't that long ago. And now they are just like our truth fodder. Again, I also love our truth, but like, let's not get it. I mean, we know what his place is on the card and yep. what he's doing. It's just crazy that this is the act that they chose to pair with our truth and not something else. And see, this, kind of is, this, is, this is kind of funny to me how, because they had a, a Miracle on 34th Street street fight. And you compare that street fight to the street fight that happened on, on collision between the women. And you can just see the mentality that goes into the two different ones of, of this is a comedy spot on, on WWE. This is supposed to be taken seriously on, on AEW. And one of them is working and one of them didn't work as well for me because the spots that you're doing on that have been done to MJF in the back where he's getting hit with one bottle and is knocked out forever. Meanwhile, Willow Nightingale's taking a bottle and, and coming back and kicking ass and taking names. And it, 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 these spots are, it exposes a lot of, of the, the, the goofiness of those matches when they're just thrown away and put together so quickly as, as that. Whereas over here, it's just like, yeah, we know it's stupid. Let's embrace this stupidity. And WWE is what is a lot better at the cohesion of the entire show. Like there is a through line that runs through everything and they're consistent with things. AEW just kind of offshoots and they just kind of, I mean, that is part of AEW's appeal, but also you get into situations like, yeah, your world champion gets knocked out with a bottle and Willow Nightingale takes one and 
finishes the match. It's like, yeah. That never even crossed my mind. We ha- like we have to be we have to play within the confines of the universe yes. that we're building. And a lot of times AEW plays hard and loose with those things. Whereas WWE maybe at times is a little too stringent with it. Maybe you could have yeah. one of one and a little bit the of the universe other. in AEW condenses really quickly into like the universe is that match. And then things that happen around that right. match, even though they are right before another match is going to do the same thing, they lose track of it's like the producers aren't talking to each other backstage to know the, the spots that they're going to be doing in each match, which blows my mind that if that's happening. Uh, I just I'm I'm over Judgment Day. I, well. I, I I'm right there with you in the sense that yeah I agree 100. percent They came in as a dominant threat. I wish they were a dominant threat, but I, I'm happy with the comedy they produced. I mean, y- you got Dominic grabbing our truth so he headbutts uh, JD in the nuts, just you know, yeah. and, and selling that, and then you get you know Priest in the back going, oh JD. You're still in the judgment day for now. You get a backstage interview with our truth going, yeah, he's still in there. We need somebody to do chores and clean up around the clubhouse and all this other stupid so ass stuff. They fucking say clubhouse one more fuck. <laughs> that had a noise of piss out of me. I, who, I don't know who greenlit that that was okay. They are grown men in their late 30s with a clubhouse. That it's, is nothing. It's funny to me on a couple of levels. One, in that city to city, this quote unquote clubhouse gets moved and set up for them each time. Right. And they need locks for it every day. Uh, and two is the, one of the running themes, not the running theme, I don't guess, but a joke that we kind of started in, in every once in a while, it sounds like it might be a reality is that me and Jim and Corey that do, uh, the, we are a star war podcast on a trip that I had to take with Jim for some work stuff last year. We started talking about building a quote unquote clubhouse in his backyard and that would just be like where we put a big ass TV with like a DVD, you know, whatever streaming and like old video games. And it would just be like grown men clubhouse. Yeah. <laughs> why, why wouldn't you want to hang out in a clubhouse? Why, why don't you, you want to do hang? It. You know why you didn't do it? Because it's a fucking stupid oh, idea. No, it was a monetary, it was a monetary <laughs> issue. They didn't have, he didn't have the, the, the judgment day money coming it's, in. Otherwise there'd be a clubhouse. It's like a there. rec room, but we call it the clubhouse. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's, we got a few other things to, to touch on here. We got the Reigns and Orton set up. I, I, it's, it <clears throat> is what it is. There was a couple good lines in there, but overall, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. You, you, you ain't it's losing fun. the belt off of Reigns before WrestleMania. Right. So this is, it, it's a, it's a solid match, but it ain't. Also, it, we've seen this before. That's, I, can, I come back to a lot of that with a lot of rest. Like we were just here not that long ago. Right. AJ Styles. We were just here not that long ago. Yeah. But now you got a legend killer going after the, the legend in his own time. Yeah. And I well, mean, Randy looks jacked. He Sp- does. Speaking of AJ, we got his return this week. He's uh, looks like he's going bad guy, though. I, I'm happy with that. I mean, I don't I don't necessarily think that him and the uh, what, what the hell you call the the bullet club. The OC. The OC. The thank OC. you. Yeah. I, I, th- those are two guys that I don't get how they have screwed up their lives so much to have gone from being, you know, legitimate badasses to being just stupid guys. That I, if you told me they had a clubhouse, I'd believe it. Yeah. But also at the same time, they're, I mean, they're getting a check to do what? Nothing. Yeah. Pretty sweet gig. <laughs> Pretty sweet. It is kind of crazy though. Cause you watch like, you can watch Carl Anderson highlights from new Japan. You're like, Oh, this dude is like a stud in the ring. And now he's. Yeah. Nothing. It's, yeah. it's, they, it's like they, it's like they could not find a way to get over it. because they have such an edginess to them. They don't know how to exist in a PG world and and can can conform yeah. to what it is. And I, I I think that's on them more than anything. Yeah. Um, you know what you were contracts on it. When you AJ were Styles is just cool. It's cool to see him still going at this age. No, I mean he's not too. what he was. You oh, know, but he's the looking the best he, he ever has been. Um, Hair still looks good too. <laughs> AJ to me will always be like, I just have such an affinity for like 2005 AJ Styles to that like that TNA that's 18 X years di- ago X, X division him yeah, just being just, I mean well that, and it's crazy that's what like he was he was a small that dude. dude he was a small mid card yeah. dude back with him facing off against Joe back then yeah. and, and them not being anywhere close to sniffing you know. In, in a world with, with Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, and like AJ Styles in New Japan, too. Like, if you've never seen any of that stuff, like that, when he came in and was the leader of Bullet Club, mm-hmm. like, that was some good stuff. I'm glad, though, that he has, similar to kind of what I wish Kenny Omega, whenever, like, I think a year ago, his contract was coming up, and I was like, I kind of wish Kenny does go to WWE, because if Kenny never goes to WWE, there's going to be a large segment of fans that just write him off yeah. from wrestling history. That's not going to happen with AJ Styles, because he was in WWE and got sure. over. Um so uh, I'm glad that that didn't, didn't and, happen. And maybe that's maybe that's where we'll get is is we lose Priest from the Judgment Day we get because you know Finn and, and AJ have a connection. He, he, maybe we make a, a a legitimate version of the the WWE Bullet Club in a way or some way. I, I can hope. Bullet Club Silver. Well, yeah, honestly. platinum. Yeah, Bullet Club platinum. We ain't selling platinum. ourselves short. <laughs> yeah. It's like I was starting to say that, and I was like, well, that's kind of second rate Bullet Club. <laughs> Uh, so next, we kind of touched on the street fight a minute ago. I'm um, assuming that's what you yeah. had by Street Fighter Two. Then we got Gunther and Miz um, last night. The Gunther is Gunther's amazing. I mean, you talk about how Gunther is the only matches you watch. Gunther has an ability to elevate everybody that he has been in a ring with, and for being, I mean, he and Chad Gable. We were talking about matches. That was probably one of the best inter- or one of the more entertaining to me matches from WWE for this year. I mean, he has pulled – and I, I love The Miz, but he pulled two amazing Miz matches out of out of The Miz. He has – I mean, he is not – I was talking about how Becky Lynch has done this when her NXT run and, and such. She was able to get – elevate some people. Gunther is not Becky Lynch. Gunther is not Seth Rollins, but Gunther is is showing – a maturity, a growth as a wrestler that if once you get him to where he needs to be, that company is you're going to the stars that you don't see in other people. I think he will be the the key point in making other people shine more than you ever believed they could. He I mean, yeah, he does have like you said, he has a special ability to elevate people. And that's something that not everybody has, especially not even a lot of the top level guys have that kind of thing. Uh and again, he he kind of stands out in WWE because he is so different. He is a throwback. There is a physical style to him that the rest of the people on that roster do not wrestle like. Uh, and so when it comes across in those matches, it stands out on the show. And I think a lot of it, why he's elevating people is like, you take a chop like that, it, it wakes you up. Like it, there is something like just being in the ring, getting hit that hard. I'm like, All right, we're in this now. But and that goes back to why I, I complain so much about because he's doing the same stuff that AEW does, but because he is unique in the fact that he is doing it, he is spotlighted in that ability as opposed to where AEW it has become just so commonplace, it stands out more. But I do. But I think like. If you were if you were asking me to like list like best in ring right now, just work rate styles, Gunther I think is top three. So like even if he was in AEW, I think he'd still be standing out. I'd say I don't know if he would stand out as much there. I think he would. I think he is just sometimes you just have dudes that are just that special. Yeah, I, I think that that's. I mean, what I he would is. want him to be. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but I, I because everybody else, the moment he started doing that, everybody else would be doing the exact same thing as him. It doesn't get that shine that he does. And I say he elevates people, but he has a weak spot too, in the sense that he elevates the people he fights, not the elevate elevates the people that are with him because Giovanni and and um, Ludwig. They're they're elevated somewhat, but they ain't getting the same elevation like Chad Gable, Miz, and the others that fought him got. No, I mean, but there is like – Miz is just a consummate professional. Whatever you put him in, he's going to do great. So you can get – Chad Gable is also can work with him in ring. Like, Lugwood and Giovanni, like, they just, I mean, what, the, what do they have? They're not going to be stars. They're not future champions. Yeah, they just like, got the luxury of they're being in the stable. I'd say yeah. they red card people. Lidwood could be the person to to carry on the interna- intercontinental title after Gunther goes on for a little bit, but he ain't going to be Seth Rollins' title challenger. No, and this just brings up an interesting thing about like, now what do you do with Gunther? Yeah. That, that's that's kind of where I was going into this. Kind of stuck is, in limbo. Is, yeah, we or before we were saying, you know, Gunther will go up, challenge Seth. Well, now that's not happening. I mean, the 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 rumored match that keeps getting brought up, and you know, I'll I'll, I'll watch it because it would be interesting to me. Is is Gunther Gunther versus Brock? Now, do you put the title on Brock? If you put the Intercontinental title on Brock, I mean, what do you do with that? Who, who at some point? You got to have somebody that that's going to take that belt from them. That is a 
a full-time regular on your show every day performer. Can we can we just be done with Brock? Brock is Brock's an attraction, man. I hate to break it to you. He is the Andre <sighs> Giant of this of of this generation. So fucking boring. I think at this point though, I would rather see like what if we got Sami Zayn and Gunther at WrestleMania? I mean Sami Zayn as your as as the Sammy, person like Sami's the, the type of guy Sammy, Jey Uso, somebody at that right underneath the main event, semi main event level is the guy that needs to wrestle Gunther. So so you in in your world here, we get somebody who is a main event level talent having to take Gunther out yeah. in order to elevate him by showing that it took this level to to take him out. And then you maintain the title at where it's at. Because mm-hmm. anybody if you go Ludwig, if you go anybody else, you're immediately gonna just discount all the work Gunther did in elevating the title because it's just going to go right back to where it was. Whereas if like, if it's a Sammy, if it's a Jey Uso, and see, if but that's a Kevin Owens, if uh, somebody true. like that at that level. See, I think Brock would be a good one as well in that situation. Now you'd have to immediately find a way to get that belt right off Brock. Which would be, yeah, yeah, which would be something like you'd be like, okay, so if you went, if you, if you went Gunther to Brock, you would then just have to go Brock to somebody like Sammy and then it would just been better to just do. But the reason why I say Brock is a better choice is because Brock has the one. And now, mind you, it's the two but now, but he has the one. Gunther to me feels like a thing though. That you, that Gunther and Brock feels like a thing you do that has no title involved in it. Maybe. But he has to beat him at that stage either way. So, like, if I'm bringing Brock, like if I'm doing Gunther and Brock... Gunther's. I mean, I would. He's, he's Gunther's got to put the Brock. one in. in, in yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gunther beats one. Brock, and then he solidifies himself. But like, you could, if you did, let's just say, for instance, Sami Zayn. If Sami Zayn somehow rallies and beats Gunther at WrestleMania, well, that's not a big knock for Gunther because Sami is a huge star. Mm-hmm. Sami can have the title. He can feud with somebody. Then, if you immediately go into Gunther and Brock, you're building for a reason. Yeah. Gunther beats Brock. Well, now Gunther's right there. Whoever has the title, he's back. But see, that's the thing. At a world title level. The belt, if you're going to take the belt off of him, it can't be Sami Zayn at WrestleMania, even though that's that ele- that keeps that momentum, because then you've got another year before you get that, that WrestleMania of Gun- Gunther and Brock. Let, let's say the belt goes on, the main belt, or whatever you want to call it these days, Roman's belt. Let's say Roman's belt goes on Cody and... Rollins' belt goes on Punk, like you said earlier. They walk out of Mania with that. Yeah. Then would you later in the year, Gunther at Punk. SummerSlam, do... You could do Gunther Rock at SummerSlam. Yeah. Gunther could blame Lugwood and Giovanni for his loss, and they could have a little mini feud, and Gunther beats yeah. the shit out of both of them. But it's not it's not the same marquee. But then but could, but would you turn around like a few months later and take... How long does Cody keep his belt before you let Gunther have it? Well, hopefully this is the Roman Reigns thing is the last time that we see somebody hold a down belt for four years, 700 days, whatever well, the hell I mean, it is. Gunther's right behind him. But, 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 they, it's, a, but it's a mid-card title. It's a mid-card title. And also it's, we have been, you think that they've given it to Gunther to just, hey, we have, we see a lot of potential in you. Here's a title, elevate it, hold off. Because when the main event scene clears up a little bit, you're going to insert there. Well, now it's just got even more money. even more money. Or do you do you do somebody like an LA Knight? Well, LA Knight and Logan Paul is going to be the match at WrestleMania. You, you That's do. yeah. I mean, you can. Logan Paul's not out here name dropping LA Knight for no reason. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's yeah. what they're going to do, and that but makes I sense. Mean, that gets him in the U.S. title scene for a yeah, while. Yeah. So now that's you can come that. out. Now you come out. And you have. New champions galore. You have new storylines. Now, I think if Roman is going to lose his title and drop it at WrestleMania, it's a perfect opportunity to do a complete kind of refresh of a lot of things and start this thing back up again with new stories, new people, because it's kind of been – there really is no difference WWE right now from where it was at at this point last year. The only difference is – you're further along. You're further along, but it's the same, same people have the titles. <laughs> same people has the titles, but you've got some fresh faces coming in to to kind of shake the shake the tree a little bit. You got to yeah. have Randy somewhere in there to at the WrestleMania. I mean, I don't, yeah, Randy would stay. Uh, Randy would just give Randy. Let's figure out a way Randy can do some kind of crazy RKO with somebody. That's where he needs. Randy doesn't need to be anywhere near a title at this point in his career. Yeah. 
Well, uh, same mean, for AJ Styles. Is, is, is his next win, does he break the, the record? Randy? Oh, I don't think so. He's got it. He's up there with, with Flair. Are they tied? They're close. I thought it was just Flair and Cena that were tied. He's he's in the he's like within one or two. Oh well, then as I think for me that's just where he's got to stay. Let's uh, we still got a couple more points on Raw, and then I had a thing or two I wanted to circle back to. Uh, there's a note about the women's tag. You got new wins. When we have new WWE women's tag champions, and that was such. Two weeks ago, you had the surprise victory of of Katana and Carter taking out. Uh, who was it? Natalia and Knox. Tegan Knox. Yeah. Tegan Knox. So they took that out in a surprise, and then one week later, they managed to to be the new tag team champions from Chelsea Green and Piper. I mean, so I, I'm not sure what the, the the plan is with that, but that I mean that came out of left field. Is um, they are the most established tag team in the women's division at this point. I mean, they've been together for two to three years. Whereas everybody else is just kind of thrown together. So, I mean, I'm not sure. They've got some interesting move sets. They've got some fun to them, but they've got a much like you have a, an opinion of the creed, my where where you think they need to get a personality. I think these two need to get a personality to really succeed because other than just having belts, that, that's all they got at this moment. Listen, this was one of those things where it's like, all right, tag tiles are not doing nothing like Sometimes you just got to put people in a spot in a spot and see how they respond. Like I don't know, uh, yeah. tech, they could be good, but like you said, they kind of just have. A, there's a lot of like lower mid card people that are kind of just like, all right, we'll see if they develop into anything. But but I'm curious now where you run with with Chelsea Green and and Piper Niven because Chelsea mean, will be fine. You can put her. Oh yeah, she's she's charismatic enough. You can she throw her in she is the perfect foil for Adam Pierce. But you know yeah. it needs to be something more than that. Yeah. So you had a note about villains as well. There is a severe lack of of villains on on this show right now. Drew McIntyre is your sole card carrying villain outside of Rhea Ripley. I mean, the Judgment Day, like I said, they have lost their 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 menacing villain card on that end. You got Roman Reigns on the other side, and I guess Logan Paul is your 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 villain on that side, but he ain't really a villain so much as just a jackass with a microphone. Yeah. Uh, so a couple things I wanted to touch on real quick at the end. Did, did y'all see the? It's one of the Ric Flair interviews going around, and they're they're talking to him about the Iron Claw, and he's like pee peeing in his poo poo pants. Have you seen that? Uh-oh. He's like being like, well, they should have done. You know, they haven't made a movie about me yet, and this, that, and the other. Uh-oh. And it's one of those things, you Uh-oh. know. He was like, yeah, we kind of carried the Von Erichs back then and this so on and so forth and he i just like okay flair this doesn't need to be about you right and right. He, but the whole thing about they haven't made a movie about me yet i'm like do you do we want that do we need that but, you know it is it is rare for you to see a man in that age being able to s his own d that much <laughs> no no it's uh yeah you don't want to know yeah because they because if they make a movie it's only gonna be like right. you ain't got a lot of good parts Right. He had a great career. I think sure. he's the greatest of all time. And he, I mean, he, he had – there's tragedy. He overcame tragedy of that plane crash and, and and succeeded where, you know, normal people might not have. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he did a lot of shit things in between that. <laughs> right. And as soon as you go to make a movie, people are going to be like, well, why didn't you talk about those things? Right. So it's it's poisonous right on its head. Right. So the, the – the I just thought – found that to be amusing. That was the thing that stuck out in my head was like mm. – Maybe don't make this about you, right? Yeah. And then uh, the other thing was Cabana Man Dan, friend of the show, is back. Did you see his appearance this week? He like, popped out of a present. I <laughs> yeah. see that. Yeah. It's like a big ass box in the yeah. corner, and it, it was like full of bamboo and like limbs and shit. And uh, Rolando Perez is going to dig in it. And Cabana Man jumps out and just like starts whipping yeah. his ass. So I thought that was funny. It's pretty awesome. The Iron Claw. That's what like. You know, wrestling movies, we kind of really only have, like, The Wrestler and, like, Ready to Rumble, and that's kind of it. <laughs> Obviously, on two different ends of the spectrum. I've uh, seen some reviews of Iron Claw, and people say it's really, really good. Yeah. My only complaint is, like, I like the casting of Zac Efron as Kevin. Jeremy Allen White, though, playing Kerry Von Erich, 
if you don't know Carrie Von Erich, was the most jacked of all the Von Erichs. Okay. Yeah. Was a legit like six foot four middle linebacker type of guy. He was the most, he was, he looked the present, but he, and that's, this is what's so amazing about the Von Erichs is just the, you had David who was the wrestler, who was the skilled technical wrestler yeah. who, who, who could get over and was going to be the, the, the Von Erich to, to kick the shit out of Ric Flair. Yeah. Kevin had the appearance and ended up in. I'm sorry, Kerry had the appearance and ended up in WWE. Yeah, but then he he's the one that lost his foot, right? David Kerry died. So well, yeah, yeah, he that, yeah, he he yeah. lost. He got into a motorcycle accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came back too soon, so they had to cut off his foot, and he continued to wrestle with a with hiding the, the fact that he had, had an fact, amputated yeah, yeah, yeah. foot. Yeah, and then eventually, you know. I think he shot himself on that one. Either that or was an OD. Yeah. It might have been an o overdose. The first one, if I remember correctly, because I watched the Vice special of, a few months ago, the first brother that died was the OD, and Dude. the second one was the one that um, committed suicide on the farm, right? Okay, okay so yeah. that would be David... And again, they say it's OD. They say it's, you know, ruptured intestinal tract, sure. whatever. Brody cleaned up the drugs. Brody didn't clean up drugs. I don't know what, what went on there. Yeah. That, that'll be something that, you know, nobody's alive to tell me anymore. Right. right. But yeah, he, he David went out first. Mike, who was not, he wasn't the wrestler. That's the problem. He, he wanted to be, he had the passion, but he didn't have the skills. Gunshot. Carrie went after that. And then one had cancer. Yeah, Kevin's and Kevin's the only one that's alive. So the the story, I get why they went with the big star to play Kevin and Zach Efron. It's just Kevin, that, he's still there to say, hey, these, I want this guy to be me. Yeah, it's just like the in the casting of David is fine. That dude looks the part. Yeah. Jeremy Allen White might be as tall as I am. I'm five foot eight. <laughs> And I'm probably a little I'm probably just as thick as as Jeremy Jer, Jeremy Allen White is. And like just seeing the two of them side by year, you're like, oh, there wasn't anybody that you could have got that could have played. Jeremy Allen White's a fantastic actor, by the way. Sure, I'm not shitting sure, on him. Sure, sure. It's just that when you make a movie about wrestling, yeah, Alan, physiques are a big part about wrestling. I realized that Alan Richardson was tied up with Reacher, <laughs> but that would have been your caster. Okay, I mean, that could have, yeah. Hey, that's a big dude. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see the movie, Christmas, though. Christmas yeah. Day, I think. Yeah. And I read that like MJF's part completely got cut out. Oh, Kinda. did it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just Oops. cut it out. You, you see, Literally. you see all the uh, the 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 hubbub that came from that red carpet, though. Oh yeah, with uh, John Cena, Cena him shaking Cena. hands yeah. and how John Cena's got more to gain. You're more likely to see John Cena in in AEW than you are to MJF in WWE because Cena's career now has more to do with the WB than it does with wrestling. Yeah. And I was like, oh man. I and then the, the Co Cody dropped the little nugget in his interview either the past two weeks that like he thinks at some point we'll see MJF in the WWE and like he just put over MJF at some point. Him. Yeah, I don't. Know. I, I think the dude signed AEW. Well, he, he, they, they had a tweet come out here recently again where they're starting to hype it again. Where MJF hasn't signed, I'm like, that's full of shit. He, that dude signed. If you haven't yeah. signed, just him, because he hasn't, he, maybe he hasn't signed, but I bet he's agreed to a contract in principle. If if Tony Khan has not gotten that signature on the paper right now, he is a bigger dumbass than I ever imagined. <laughs> yeah. I would I would agree. Well, I think we could probably end on that one for this <laughs> week. Uh, Y'all tune in next week. Find us. Uh, wherever you find your podcast and obviously share us with a friend. If you're listening, you already know where to find us. Uh, we're on uh, Twitter still or what X, whatever the fuck it's called and Instagram and threads at Alabama slam pod. Um, not sure how much longer I want to keep the, the, the Twitter account around. I finally deleted my personal account the other night. Um, I, it, I feel like if I, if more of the people that I enjoy following, on Twitter, we're actually on threads. I would probably actually just deactivate the account for this anyway. But uh, find out, find our fellow podcasters at the Alabama Take .com. We got a bunch of friends that do podcasts that come out weekly and monthly over there. Um, uh, the Alabama Take on all social medias, um, except for Twitter. I think he's deleting that one in January. So um, yeah, just uh, tell your friends about us and we'll talk to y'all again next week. Later, guys. Later. <laughs>